Hi, I'm Johnny Hart from Hassett Retrofit. Today I'll be showing you how to install one of our CDI Plus units on your car. We'll be starting with the straight swap uh, direct replacement for the Bosch unit and then we'll be locking the distributor on the car and showing you how to dial in the ignition timing and put a full engine control ignition map in the box so that all of the time is done electronically. So we just need a few basic tools for this job. Uh, we have a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench with a angled head. That's very useful for getting in on the distributor uh, clamp bolt. Uh, we have a five millimeter Allen wrench for undoing the CDI unit. Uh, just straightforward flathead screwdriver and timing light. And these are available on most uh, websites now they're not that expensive and uh, we have pc or well, laptop running windows uh, running the software software is on our website you can download a zip file and install that on any pc you can look at that even without purchasing the box so if you're curious uh, please do go to our website and download it so firstly here's my sc with the standard ignition box uh, so i'm going to show you how to swap over to one of our CDI plus units. Uh, I've got a timing light connected so I'm gonna start the car and just gonna see what the timing is doing. So the timing is running at about two degrees uh, before top dead centre, which is uh, in the in the ballpark. This is five degrees plus or minus two, I think, per spec. So let's go and swap to the CDI Plus unit. Uh, first of all, as it comes um, with no no timing curve inside it, so as a straight replacement for the Bosch. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, swap the, uh, the unit out for the CDI Plus unit. I'll confess to only having one bolt in the top of it. The speed. And if you've got an early car, I'm afraid you've got nuts on the back of the uh, relay panel. Start her up and just look at the timing again. Shouldn't have moved by much anyway. So that's easy really, um, nothing uh, too strenuous. Uh, if you've got a timing light, you know, it's best to always check the timing uh, anytime you change any ignition components really. Um, 
we'll see you might notice we're running uh, first of our prototype new coils uh, we're really not happy about the quality of coils in the market so these will be available hopefully in a few months time um, made of quality components actually made by hand in the UK um, so we're just in testing with that right let's move on to show you how to um, set the car up if you want to use a timing map from within the box itself so what we're going to do now is we're going to lock this uh, distributor this is an SC type distributor so you can see it's got a take the rotor off which is always a bit stiff there we go. and the dust cap it's quite important the dust cap it actually stops um, stray sparks as well it's covered in a particular material that uh, protects against the uh, HT getting back into the into the um, spark uh, trigger mechanism um, okay so the normal method of operation is that the weights move the center around which in turn moves the uh, rotor around and makes the timing advance as the engine spins faster obviously if you if you're um, engine is turning faster then you need to produce a spark earlier in the cycle otherwise you're sort of you're sort of swinging the bat after the ball has passed if that makes sense so um, we sell a little widget to lock this distributor and when it comes you'll find it has an m5 bolt now this this bolt is just to put the thing in and out of the distributor and then a slightly longer replacement M4 for actually securing it so let's go ahead and put that in I'll take the uh, original bolt out first okay so I'm going to loosen the original screw from inside and remove it Then I'm going to use the uh, the tool to insert the brass collar in the centre. The tool is really about removing it, to be honest, but it doesn't help or doesn't hurt to use it to put it in and unscrew it if I can. It's a bit stuck on there actually. These um, brass collets are slightly designed to crush, and this one's been out of the in and out of the car a few times. There we go. And then we'll put the very slightly longer screw back in. Now, when you put this in. best thing to do or the only thing to do is to as you tighten it hold the star wheel in the most advanced position so you're holding it against the spring like that and tighten the screw down give it a good tweak there we go and that is now locked that that tiny bit of movement isn't isn't important but that's essentially locked this the weights now so put the dust cap back on and the rotor so this is a standard sc rotor uh, the earlier rotors are similar and this little mechanism here is a centrifugal rev limiter so as this turns this gets thrown out and what that does is it is it cuts the ignition um, and if you've ever experienced that you'll know that it really does cut it completely and abruptly 
and in my experience it, it wants to throw you through the through the screen at the front of the car and then of course the ignition comes back and then you get thrown back in your chair and then repeat until whiplash so on our boxes we have a, a cyclic ignition cut scheme so it means it doesn't fully cut the ignition it just cuts the occasional cylinder and that means that you don't get that really horrible effect of throwing you forwards and backwards in your in your seat so what you can do is you can see this one this is for my own car you, there's a little spring in here you can remove the spring and then this plastic piece will get can be taken out and then you just end up with a, the original rotor but it defeats the the rev limit but of course it's still the right rotor for the car it's got the correct 5k resistance built in um, yeah so uh, that's a little modification for you as well okay so the distributor's locked and i've set up the box i've just got it resting in the car with the, with the usb lead connected to it um, i'm just going to show you how to kind of first of all dial in the timing so firstly what we have to do is we have to tell the box not to use um, the distributor weights so the timing is no longer um, controlled by the weights it's controlled by the box so we untick the top box here that says fixed timing using distributor weights asking me a load of questions and now what I'm going to do is just put in a very simple curve so I'm just going to move the 2000 rpm up to 20 degrees of advance just basically put 20 degrees advance in from 2000 rpm onwards now all we're doing at the moment is we want to just make sure that the timing on the screen is the timing we've actually got on the car so that is not a valid timing curve but it the zero here will allow us to start the car and then we know that we're looking for the car to be set to 20 degrees advance past 2000 rpm now the only subtlety here is that generally speaking you wouldn't set this up to include the static advance so if the static advance is five degrees you've got to add five degrees to all of these numbers so what we're saying here is that whether this is zero we actually want it to read five degrees on the timing light and when it says 20 you want it to read 25 on the timing light now the other thing is, if we click this box to show us what's achievable, we've got this red area coming down over our graph. And the reason for that is that we haven't allowed the box enough time to do this calculation. And you can change that by changing this trigger point by making it a bigger value. So I'm going to make that 30. And press right and save it send it to the unit yes okay now the other thing I'm going to change but this is just because I've got a prototype coil so I'm just going to change the spark interval here because that's just for my prototype coil so don't worry about that too much okay right so now what we're looking for is to start the car we want to measure on the timing light an idle of around zero plus the static, so five degrees. And then we want above 2000 to measure uh, 20 plus the static, so 25 degrees. And if it isn't correct, we just simply adjust the distributor rotation until we get it in the right zone. So I'll go and do that.
going to reposition the flat top and pop the cable back in. I've just got the box resting here. It doesn't, as long as it doesn't go near the HD leads, it's usually set there pretty fine. Right, so remember we've got this graph that's at zero up until uh, 2000 RPM and then it's at 20 and we want to set the timing so that it's five degrees at zero and 25 at beyond 2000. So in all honesty, the best thing to do is to set it up high where it's more, more um, critical. So I'll be looking to bring the engine up to 2000 plus RPM and adjust the distributor until the timing light reads 25. So let's give that a go. Now we know that this point here correlates with the timing light for 25 degrees at so 5 static plus the 20 degrees you've got on the graph. So effectively the, the system's dialed in so now you can do whatever thing you anything you want to with this curve and you know that it will be correct. So for example my my own SC curve which I have saved in here is this one so I know that if I download that now then that will be um, the settings for my car that was saved away um, you can also adjust the rev limiters in here and various other things it's, it's all in the manual so have a look at that and um, yeah so I hope you enjoyed that that's basically how to set your car up with a electronic control curve with CDI plus so I hope you enjoyed that quick tour of uh, the CDI Plus unit. Um, most of the uh, things that I've been going through today are in our manual, which is on our uh, website. Uh, we have a single manuals page for all our products, so you, you can find everything in one place. Uh, we're also starting up a technical forum fairly soon, uh, so look out for that where we'll be putting probably links to these videos and also um, starting a few technical threads and answering queries about our products. So uh, remember to subscribe and like the channel and stay tuned for more techie stuff on 911s. So.